You may notice that I'm somewhere similar to a video that I did a few months back, but it's got a slightly different car. So I've decided to plug a theremin via some electronics into the throttle cable of my car. Why? Why not? Mr. Plastic today, Mr. Plastic Fantastic. Uh, that's because we're going to pick something up that's equally non-musical as an orange car and we're going to try and plug it into a theremin. Uh, so I think without further ado, we'll get in the car and we'll get going. Where are we going, you ask? Well, it's actually only just down the road, but we need a big back to fit it in because it's quite big and heavy. Right, off we go. Here we go. Right, let's pick up another thing that's equally silly, shall we? So we're not going far today. We're only going over to Herne Bay, which is just down the road. I'm not gonna tell you what I'm picking up yet. Because it's pretty silly. back in the same spot and it is in the back of the car you're gonna be like oh you can already see it you can already see it what what the heck is that what could it be what could it be that's right it's an air raid siren this one's a cold war era air raid siren gotta be careful not to put your fingers in that because that will literally cut them off I've, uh, I've been told horror stories by the seller that I just got it off about people who have lost fingers in here underestimating how dodgy that could be especially even when you're carrying it and they move and your thumbs in there straight off it'll make a great cucumber cutting machine sort of like Colin Furze's uh, knife belt finger majiggy but it's got a fair bit of chunk I wish I had an inverter right now to literally plug it into the uh, car but that'll be something that we'll do the world is our oyster now we've got a castle castings brooks work cliverow lanks england so this is cold war era it's not a world war ii one world war ii ones would be inherently expensive in fact the seller had about four or five world war ii era air raid sirens in fact he had i'd say tens of air raid sirens like quite a lot of these and um, there's a YouTube channel below. Uh, there's a couple of snapshots of what he's done. I didn't ask whether to do any videos there and then, but I wish I did because it was fascinating. He had all manner of things, including the WB1400 phone set, which I've been trying to find forever. And apparently they're, they're like unicorn poo. They're, they're even rarer than unicorn poo, these, because they were only ever in uh, police uh, stations and the, the bunkers for the Observer Corps. So there's hardly any of them about, and most of them have been thrown away. The red phones would have been the phones that got the message that something was, shit was gonna happen, and it was their job to call into the telephone exchange to get all of these turned on. And he showed us all the wiring between the WB1400 to the telephone exchange, to the, this stuff, and it was fascinating. I'd love to find some of this stuff, but it is literally like unicorn poo. So yeah, amazing enough, this is aluminium. I didn't know that was aluminium, so it's got aluminium, iron i think and then aluminium cast iron i think so so it's a big old mixture of metals apparently it's bad if water gets into this part because these are two different metals iron and aluminium it creates an oxide inside pushing these outwards which causes these to seize he's mentioned that apparently people find these and notice that they're not moving start bashing them about when reality what you have to do is undo these take this off which is apparently a bit of a nightmare you're probably best off with a, a bearing puller that's been modified to pull out on these take this off and then try and uh, sort this out so it comes back to running straight and then it would work but yeah how fascinating is that i bet you're wondering what the heck i'm doing with this yeah i'm, I'm wondering as well i've always wanted an air raid siren and i think we're gonna try and make it musical first because there was one on top of the yamaha building i think it was where they had a bunch of air raid sirens that turned on and off for different notes we're going to do it differently here we're going to try and control the speed at which it runs much like the mini did we did with a theremin so we're going to put control voltage into this and try and control the speed which would in turn control the pitch that's my thinking and then we'll wire it into other things i need a lot more electronics to get this free phase chunked up to something that would be powered by a car but that might be a challenge in the future this is so bloody cool isn't it Ooh. right Let's get back. 
Oh yes, he said they're about 75 to 80 kilograms, these ones. That's about the equivalent of trying to get a stout dead body into the back of a car, which I also don't have any experience of either. <laughs> I don't believe I'd ever have an air aid siren. I have a bleeding air aid siren. Woo! Air aid siren! That wasn't light. <laughs> I guess we'll try and wire it in. We're gonna use this inverter I've got from the Game Boy Mega Machine. I've gotta be honest, I do not think this is gonna be enough to even get it going. This is 2.2 kilowatts. This probably needs closer to four kilowatts to get it running. What this is gonna do is it's gonna take the single phase and then turn it into three phase to maybe run it. Let's just give it a go and see what happens. Oh, it is gonna go. It's gonna go. Oh. Oh, it's extremely important to not get your hands anywhere near it because that will cut them off. That's like, that's, I've got this a little bit uncomfortably close, to be honest. Holy crud! to bolt it down because it's wobbling all over the place. I'm gonna get a strap, strap it around it and then do it again. Couldn't find any earplugs so tissue will have to do. this one a little bit short. I was being a little bit optimistic about how quiet this was outside. We're standing outside the museum. We can hear it. Yeah, I don't want to do it anymore because of that. In the next video, we'll have an uprated inverter because this one is starting to get a bit hot and it's starting to smoke and there's even liquid coming out of it. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I'll have to look into that. Another thing is this was an acquisition for the museum uh, as a part of a, you know, an interactive display. You can tell, obviously, it's very, very noisy. We've got to make somewhat of a soundproof box, somewhat soundproof, but also run it at a slightly lower rev range. It's not really made to be used constantly, so it won't be a full pelt still. But yeah, we'll just make a somewhat uh, soundproof box with a window in it. So people can see it, push a button, start up and slow down, and obviously it just doesn't take over the whole sound. When it was running just now, it was in a reasonably soundproof part of the museum. And as you can tell, that's just not enough. So yeah, we really got to think about this. Really got to think about this. If any 
anybody knows any studios nearby that will let me uh, practice this in the soundproof room uh, and kind of practice the theremin playing the uh, air raid siren, then please get in touch because I really want to try and play somewhere over the rainbow on the siren, of course. But it doesn't make everybody think that something is going seriously wrong. But come on, how fudging cool is that? Anyway, I'm Lookman No Computer. This is a Castle Castings Air Raid Siren. And remember, don't be scared to try it. Maybe don't try this. Maybe don't try this one. <laughs>